here's a life hack. If you get married at Christmas time, you ain't got to decorate that shiz. It's already decorated. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Chewing the Fat. I am your host, Big Rob. Thank you so much for tuning in. I certainly do appreciate that. Thank you for all the folks who have bought me coffee at ChewingTheFatBR.com. I really appreciate that. And then the folks that have written reviews as well on Apple Podcasts and and giving the five-star ratings, that means so much to me, and I really, really appreciate it. I'm excited about my guest for today. I've known him for... Oh, probably 15 or so years. He's one of the first folks that I ran into uh, in town, uh, in theater. Please welcome Wes Hennings. Big Rob, what is going on? Hey, buddy. Can I tell you how excited I am to be here? <laughs> you are you are I, beaming. <laughs> I am such a fanboy of Big Rob right now. Because here's what happened. We were having lunch a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And um, we were talking about the podcast. And, and I you said, hadn't listened at I all. I hadn't listened at all. And you gave me this look like, like <laughs> we are not friends. Like this will be the last one. It lunch. was the, the, we are not friends look. <laughs> and so I went home immediately. I probably on the way home from that lunch started listening to the podcast and man, this is so much fun. Like it is you. Well, one, of course your voice is like the perfect radio voice. I mean, <laughs> and I'm not just blowing smoke here. It's like, yeah. you know, you just need to narrate. Some people want Morgan Freeman to narrate their life. For me, <laughs> it's big. Rob. Uh-huh. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's, I don't know if I'll be able to get my head out of the uh, studio now that you've inflated it so Good, much, but yeah. I, I appreciate that. Uh, Wes, we met, uh, I believe at an audition for the Augusta players. Mm-hmm. Um, it was my first show as, uh, you know, talking with Ryan, who actually got me to that audition for Jekyll and Hyde. Mm-hmm. And um, I got cast in the show, as as many males often do. Right. <laughs> that, Listening that, to that episode with Ryan, I was like, that, oh, so that's when I met Big Rob. It was. I it was, was like, because I don't remember. You've just been such a, Aww. it's been such a long time now. I'm like, I just feel like you've just always been here. But, and people don't that. know you were also in my wedding. Yes. So, yes. Um, in the yeah, wedding. I got married ooh, a while back now, nine years. Yeah. Wow. Has so, it been that long? Mm-hmm. That is so wow. crazy. That's awesome, though. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was we, a lot we, of fun. we had a good time. Three days after Christmas. Yeah. You yeah. know, nothing like nothing like doing it right in you the know, busiest season of the year. That's right. You know, all nothing. kinds of crazy work happening. I mean, but stuff. you know, the decorations were already there. So, exactly. You, know, you don't if here's here's a life hack. If you get married at <laughs> Christmas time, you ain't gotta decorate that shiz. It's <laughs> already decorated. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. That's, there you go. That's that, your value bomb. If you're right gonna there. take anything from this episode, that's it. That's the one. <laughs> that's the one. Uh, but yeah, we and, it, and it's funny, we both kind of had similar backgrounds. We we both worked at Channel Twelve, yes, for a while. Then uh-huh. you know, obviously, we didn't know that right away. But then, Twelve on your side. Mm-hmm. Uh, back at, back in the day, I I worked there several years before before you did because I'm also several years older than you are. But uh, but it's just funny the the you know the way that you know lives can intertwine and and interweave you know similar. Uh, life experiences and stuff like that, but exactly. having somebody I could talk nerdy video stuff with, <laughs> and editing and production and, and cameras and all that stuff that was that was so cool. And then you're just such a talented performer, oh man, uh, you know. And uh, always one of my favorite character actors whenever uh, you're in things. And we've done several shows together. Uh, like I said, uh, Jekyll and High was the first one. We also have done, a, I think we did a couple of uh, ones out at Fort Gordon. Yes. Uh, was it the the, the Sherlock Holmes and yes. West End Horror? Yes. I was like, he he does so many Sherlock Holmes things out there. It's hard to remember which and, and is there's, which. I think there's another one going on this week. I think he's yeah. got another one going on <laughs> this week. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a Ken Ludwig Sherlock Holmes one that's going on right. this weekend. but uh, And so here's what people don't know about character actors is that that is the fun thing to be. Oh, yeah. Like everybody dreams of being what Brad Pitt or, mm-hmm. you know, Jennifer Aniston. No, that is hard work. Being the lead. <laughs> I've been the lead in a couple shows that don't require, you know, mm-hmm. 
Brad Pitt looks to mm-hmm. be the lead. You were the, were you um, the baker in. Uh, I was. I played the into baker the into the woods and Charlie Brown in yes. the t- that in the, Charlie the Brown the titular role. Is, am I allowed to say that? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> of of that show. Um, so when you're playing the lead, you have to work. Like you have to carry the show. You have yeah. to make sure that stuff happens. Yeah. But when you're a character, you get to come on and just steal just chew scenery yeah in those yeah. scenes yeah and people love it oh yeah they just eat it up you get wild applause in the curtain call you didn't practice nearly as much you didn't have nearly as much stress as those other people you had that one big song or that one big yeah. scene and you just killed it and then you're like thank you and then you're drop, like walk out. okay i'm drinking beer in the back <laughs> <laughs> you know that doesn't really happen no but, no, but but that is true that yeah. is true character and and when you're when you're an actor and you you know yourself and i know myself right. and i know that the shape of my body only fits into certain roles you know i was talking with uh jay about this you know i know i'm going to be cast as the neighbor or the friend mm-hmm. or the or the goofy whatever that's just me and that's okay i'm okay with that you know, because mm-hmm. that is the fun stuff. That's some of the f- the fun stuff. It's like, yeah, maybe it doesn't have as much uh, glamour as some of that stuff, but it is. Those are the fun roles. Rob, were you in South Pacific? I was not. Okay. We did South Pacific, and I don't know that this story translates via audio. Okay. But um, there was there in my mind. a, there was like a 16-year-old boy in the show. Mm-hmm. Um, he was very devout, Jesus Christ Church of Latter-day Saints. Mm. And we were singing a song that there's nothing like the shape of a dame okay and so he gets to sing that role and needs to make the shape of a dame with his hands on the Uh, stage uh i promise you the first time we made that the boy straight made a triangle Ooh! i was like hmm i don't know what kind of women what you're looking at at the church what what does dame mean in in mormon what does dame mean (laughs) so I, I don't know where that came one come from. That's free. But yeah, no, no, no that's, but when you, I'm just, I'm just saying like the, 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 the people that you interact with, the, the different skill level, skill sets of people that, that you have. I, I mean, I found that second family doing theater. I, I, I tell anyone that if you ever have any inkling of wanting to do that type of stuff, search it out. There's, yeah. you know, there's groups that, that, are are looking for people here and they will welcome you in. There is a community of people doing almost anything you want to do. I feel like, mm-hmm. but no, you're exactly right. Because I came to Augusta, Georgia um, as a little kid from Arkansas when I was 22 years old and didn't know a soul in this area and um, got involved with the theater community and they, they became my family. I, I mean, I, I had a church family as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so faith is a big part of my life, but that theater family, was there for me through, through so much stuff. And, you know, rehearsals can get intense and can get long. So you're spending, when you're involved in a show, if you're not working, you're, you're practicing this craft. So, yeah. Um, so you get to know them so well and, you know, so many of them were at the wedding. So many of them are just, yeah. are just family to me and they're scattered across the, across the United States, across the globe now, but yeah. you yeah. know, <clears throat> we keep up because they're, their family. Exactly. Um, you talk about moving here from Arkansas. What what precipitated the move from Arkansas? Why oh, Augusta from Arkansas? I was going to be the thing in television news, Rob. Okay. Um, because I'm a person of a certain girth, mm-hmm. um, I it wasn't in front of the camera. Yeah. But I was going to produce the news, and mm-hmm. it was going to be awesome. You know, I was headed to New York City. Okay. Um, yeah. But you got to pay your dues. Yeah. You got to take a job in a small market. So mm-hmm. I ended up in Augusta, Georgia, which is not the smallest market. No, no. actually. I think it's a nice mid size. Yeah. I think it's like one hundred something like that. Yeah, like one ten was yeah. probably where it was then. It, yeah. it may fluctuate a little. Yeah. But. Um, so took a job and took a job in Augusta, mm-hmm. and it sucked. Oh. I hated television news. <laughs> so had you done television news before coming here? Nope, uh, in college. Oh, okay. So this was so the first out of college. This was my first. Yeah. Oh wow. I really despised it. Yeah. Um. So I decided one one night that I could not write another story about a house fire in 
downtown Augusta. Like mm-hmm. I, that was the last thing I could do anymore. Mm-hmm. And so my um, worship pastor at my church said, Hey, we're looking to bring a media guy on at the church. And so that's where I went and spent, spent the next decade and some change there. Wow. And now I'm one of those people who decided to blow up my life in the pandemic. Oh, wow. Um, so changed jobs during the pand- pandemic, mm-hmm. found, found a job that I can work remote. I love okay. it. My wife also quit her job and decided to start a business during the pandemic. So, um, you know, I think, I think the pandemic was uh, one of those situations. Yes. A lot of bad happened. You know, mm-hmm. we, we lost friends. We lost common friends yeah. uh, during uh, COVID. But there were a lot of people that took that as a opportunity for self-reflection. Exactly. And what is important? What am I willing to put up with? What am I not willing to put up with? And if I catch this thing and it's going to kill me and I look back, how regretful am I going to be for what I've done up to this point? Right. And if I'm you know, over a certain amount of regret, then you know what, I'm going to go ahead and change this and and do what I can while I can to, to, to make it better for myself. Exactly. You know, and I had, I had a a plum gig. My Mm -hmm. job, my job at the church was amazing. I loved it. Those Mm -hmm. people are like, are also my family. It's my actual family. And then the church and the theater folks, they're right. They're always with me through a lot of stuff. I'm sure we'll get into. Yeah. But, um, It was hard. It was a hard decision to leave, but you come, you come to that point where you say, this was a season in my life Mm -hmm. and I can love that season and I can look back on it and say, dang, that was a great season of my life. Mm -hmm. But that season came to an end. Right. Summer is a great season. It's really (laughs) hot here in Augusta. Yeah. Super hot. Yeah. But sometimes that season ends and it's time to put out the pumpkins. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Sell everything. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> right. I heard somebody say the other day that hating pumpkin spice is more basic than pumpkin spice. Mm. And I thought, okay, okay. I can get behind that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm okay. I'm okay mm-hmm. with pumpkin spice. I mean, right. you know, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll drink it with all the Karens out there. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah. I, I mean, the, my thing is like not to get off on the, a different tangent, but yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of cinnamon. So then that's mm. when you talk about pumpkin spice, it's not a whole lot of, pumpkin flavor in it no it's mostly the spice so (laughs) but i mean yes i realize there's pumpkin puree and this that and the other in it but anyway Mm -hmm. i digress um (laughs) but yes like you said a a a season season changed Mm -hmm. time to time to put on put on uh, a different suit and this suit was one that you could you know, wear at the house exactly. in your boxer shorts, you know, it's like, <laughs> Hey, I, you know, cause, cause you have, uh, two daughters. Yes. Two um, very rambunctious <laughs> twin girls, three years old. And, and so that gives you more time to be there, um, mm-hmm. to be present. That's one of those things, uh, you know, that I learned even with my boys being, you know, 24 and 27, during you know shutdown and all like that being able to spend more time and have a little bit more time together mm-hmm. it's like no, no there's there are times when it's too much it's like okay i need yeah. to i need to step outside for a few uh-huh. minutes i can't stand you at this moment please please stop and you know, ministry but. ministry is a, a lifestyle gig really mm-hmm. um which is great because it's flexible and you do have a lot of time with your family and stuff mm-hmm. there too but you're also away on sundays mm-hmm. you know you have nighttime church commitments you have mm-hmm. you know a lot of stuff like that and it um it it's nice now to have weekends to go to church as a family to yeah. to, to actually know, to spend time with my <laughs> to not be worried about you know camera two not showing up because, or, exactly. or, or that you've got you know <laughs> you've got hum and a cable and you can't figure out where it's coming from and so exactly. you can actually sit and and actually soak in the message or uh-huh. right or, after i um left my job at the church somebody said when you were at the church working did you actually go to church and i had to stop and think about it because i mean you do you sit in the services and watch them yeah. but are you ever watching without that critical eye without mm-hmm. saying i know that should have gone better oh this is not yeah this is not what's the, supposed to be happening we right missed now we missed exactly that cue. yeah yeah <laughs> or texting on your phone the person that's in charge mm-hmm. while you're in the seat yeah exactly so, yeah and, and i mean because that is because you're a, you have very good work ethic and that's something that you're very conscientious conscientious of is you want those things to go right and you know some people will say you know well i don't want to go to a church where it's a it's a concert or it's a show 
and and I'm going to say this as someone who has directed shows, who has directed television, who's directed live concerts in the Georgia Dome. Yes, there is ministry that is happening in the message that's being given. But yes, also there is a technical side of it that is a show. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in a degrading type of term, but it is. And you, you, sometimes you, you, that's how you refer to it is like, you know, this is the, this is the show. This is because Mm -hmm. that's, that's the energy and the effort that people put into, to, you know, not perform, but present. Right. But you know, that's how people connect with things now. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I, I agree that uh, rock and roll church, which some people call it, is not for everybody. Right. Some people connect with the liturgical, with right, um, just, the uh, hymns uh, and the choral. hymnal and standing up and uh-huh. kneeling and, you know, whatever. But some people need need the the modern trappings, I would say, yeah, to really kind of break down those walls and say, yeah, this is something I can relate to. Mm-hmm. Um, the scriptures are something that are timeless and yeah. modern and relevant. Right. And so um, we're... My pastor likes to say we're the buckle of the Bible belt here in Augusta because yeah. this is where the, um, yeah. it's like the most churches per capita or something like that. And yeah. the Southern Baptist convention was started at the first Baptist church here on the hill. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's plenty of flavor for everybody here. Right. But, um, but at that, and, and it, to get back to that, you, it's great now that you can go and you can sit there and in, and 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 get fed as exactly they say. you get mm-hmm. fed instead of worry about feeding others and making sure that things go the way they're supposed to you can you can now take in and, exactly and when something goes wrong you may still that antenna is going to pop up because i do that on watching television commercials when things <laughs> get out of sync or something i'm like whoop i didn't mean to do that you know that antenna pops up but you can be like oh that was probably wrong but you also <laughs> have that part that, that that you're like oh but I don't have to fix yeah, it. That's not my problem. That's that's not my that's not my problem. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I, I may text laugh. the person afterwards and be like, "Oh, so, mm, but, sorry, but, sorry, that was a tough sorry, day for you." Yeah, so that, that looked like that was that was a rough day. Hope it gets better. Exactly. You know, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's that's part of you know who who you are and who you become. So so doing that, and now you have this work from home gig. Yeah, you, you you've got a, a different type of. Schedule. It's, it's one of those. The other day, I looked down and I was wearing gym shorts and I had on a button up long sleeve shirt because mm-hmm. I was doing Zoom calls. And I was like, <laughs> "This is if anyone walked into this room right now, this would be a yeah a very funny situation." But you know that I think we've all gotten used to the gym shorts and dress shirts life at this yeah. point. Yeah, you just got to make sure that your camera doesn't act, the, the the tripod doesn't actually exactly. tilt down, or you stand up too too fast. You know, don't, don't spill coffee in your lap. Although you can go viral with those videos, I that's mean, there, true. There is a there is a marketing opportunity there. Yeah, not always the best thing exactly. to be known for, but mm-hmm. yes, it could happen. No, no PR is bad PR. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've always heard that and thought no, that's not true. I don't. But. I don't think. I don't. Okay. All right. Well. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we've got the twin little girls, three years old people, mm-hmm. people say terrible twos. They, they've got nothing on the threes. Really? And I was warned about that. And mm-hmm. I said, you're, you're wrong because two, two What's, kids at two was, was something. Right. And, but now they, they talk better. They understand better. Mm-hmm. And at two, it was just like mischief. And they're just getting into at three. It's intentionally, <laughs> it's, it's getting on my nerves, right? It's you're doing this just to annoy me at this point. Right. So, Aww. um, but they're the cutest things. Yeah. Since whatever was cute. Since, since sliced bread. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I thought about that and I thought, well, that's not cute. It's, it's not cute, but yeah. <laughs> um, and if you don't mind, yeah. The, so the, the 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 twins are not your. Your only kid. No, I am. Um, I'm a dad of three, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, we had in 20, I like to say, so we got married in 2012. And then 2014, we bought a house mm-hmm. in North Augusta. God's This is God's side of the river over in South Carolina. <laughs> yes. I say that because your studio is over here as well. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And we were working on that white picket fence life. Mm -hmm. Like we literally have a picket fence. Nice. So it's not white, but, but you know, there. we have the, the four bedroom, two and a half bath right. with the fence. We mm -hmm. had the dog at the time, everything, you know, it's just, it's that idyllic life that you're, that right. you think that you're supposed to have when you're in your mid twenties or thirties. Right. right. Um, and so then we found out we were having a son, you know, great news. Um, he was born Graham Taylor Hennings yes. in 2015 and, um, everything was great until about, he was six months old mm -hmm. and, um, we went to the doctor and the doctor got one of those serious faces that you don't like to see. Right. And he said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have you go to the children's hospital actually. So we went to the children's hospital that day and over the next couple months, um, Got a really rough diagnosis, actually. It was called spinal muscular atrophy. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of people hear about it, but it's almost, it's comparable to Lou Gehrig's disease mm -hmm. in children to where oh. um, the muscles essentially atrophy. Mm -hmm. And that's all muscles, including the muscles that, you know, help you breathe and help you do everything. Oh, wow. So we learned in that couple months that, you know, he was never going to walk. He was never, you know, going to be able to sit up and that eventually the disease would take his life. We mm -hmm. had a lot of... Um, a lot of hope, like I've, I've been alluding to, we're people of faith and we believed in, you know, miracles. We prayed big things and he was doing so great. We had, that was October that he was diagnosed. And so, um, the church was incredible. Um, my wife stopped working and got to stay home with him for the next 10 months. Mm -hmm. And we didn't miss a bill. We didn't miss a house payment. Um, everything was just taken care of from the generosity of these people that we call family yeah. theater and church, you know, it, it, it still blows my mind to this day to think about it. Um, and he was getting stronger and better. And I was just telling people how, um, you know, how everything was just going so well. He was doing so much better than the doctors had said. Mm -hmm. Um, they had, they had told us in, in that October to put him, you know, on hospice and to, Oh, wow. And to get a, get a plan in place. Mm -hmm. And so everything was going great. And I said, you know, there's no reason that this diagnosis has to be what it is. So, you know, let's have big hopes and big plans. And, um, I remember saying it was a prayer season at the church and I said, you know, I'm going to pray big prayers. And, um, that, that season started on a Sunday on that Monday, I went to church, um, to pray early in the morning. We have early morning prayer services. Mm -hmm. And I remember I, I said, God, I want you to heal my son. I want him to not have this disease anymore. And, um, went home that Monday morning because we had the day off after the prayer service. My dad came over, he was building a ramp in the backyard for, to be able to take Graham's chair out there. Mm -hmm. And, um, I went out there to help him build the ramp. And my wife, came in and said, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Grandma stopped breathing. And so, um, an ambulance ride and a couple of days in the hospital later. And, um, and he was healed. My prayer was answered. He didn't have the disease anymore. He didn't hurt anymore, hmm. but he wasn't with us here anymore. Right. Um, so that's tough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is, um, you're not, you're not going to face much tougher than that in life. Yeah. Um, so, um, how long did you have Graham? We had Graham for 16 months. So he was diagnosed at six months old and then we had him for an extra 10 months, yeah. um, after that. And it was, gosh, he had, if I could have his hair, <laughs> I mean, I guess he got it from me. And Kelly, it was blonde like mine, uh -huh. blonde-ish like mine. So he got the color at least from my side of the family. Mm -hmm. But man, those were some luscious golden locks. I'm, we'll mm -hmm. have to put a picture on the socials or something. Yeah. Because they were, wow, they were something. Yeah. Movie star hair. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. And he would, he just had the most sly smiles. And, oh, he was a character. He never He never said a word. But he was, he was that character actor in our life for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he would chew the scenery every day, <laughs> yeah. but the outpouring of love that we saw after that, the people that told us stories about the joy from Graham's life, mm 
mm-hmm. and the legacy that has been left behind by that little boy amazes me to this day. It's, it blows me away. We started, um, when we were in the hospital one time, he spent a month of his life in the hospital. Probably. Um, we were there overnight. Kelly met a woman whose child had just come to the hospital to get into the NICU. She didn't have anything on her. She didn't have money for a Coke. Mm-hmm. And cause she didn't know she was <laughs> her day started. And you right. don't know you're going to the hospital that day. Right. You go to work and you, you know, yeah. you never know what the day is going to hold. And so Kelly bought her a Coke and that, the, the joy that that Coke brought to that lady mm-hmm. sparked something in my wife to where she said, we've got to help these families that don't know. So our church started putting together boxes for kids at the children's hospital. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so we asked people from our church, we have a pretty big church, you know, why don't you, why don't you put together a box with a teddy bear, some shower gel, a loofah, breath mints, a notepad. You, you want to take the notes of what the doctor's going to say, but you're scrambling. Right. Um, right. And so these boxes now, um, we do it at Easter time, at Christmas time, and we leave these boxes in the room for parents. And um, the notes that we get back from that are incredible. Um, just small kindnesses. It, you yeah. don't have to be doing something huge to make a difference in people's lives. Yeah. It's those small kindnesses that really can improve somebody's day really be something for somebody in a bad, if you're going to the hospital, you're not, you're not having a great day. Right. (laughs) I mean, it's not, that's not what you get up in the morning wanting to do. Right. So, um, it, it just been, and so many things like that. Um, I, I couldn't even name them all about all that incredible stuff that's happened. But from that, um, we had the chance to adopt these two beautiful little girls Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, there's sadness there because, there's no world in which our son and our daughters are together. Right. Does that make sense? There's no, there's no picture in our head where at this, at the Thanksgiving table that all three of them are there. Right. But there is something beautiful that came out of that story. Yeah. And now that we have these little munchkins that Mm -hmm. drive us crazy, (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know, you see, you see the beauty through the pain. Yeah. And so that's, it, it really isn't, I could talk all day about it because the, the blessings and miracles out of that story are, are insane, mm-hmm. but it has shown me that, um, because you know, I, when I left ministry, stuff like that, I was like, am I giving up my calling? Am I, mm-hmm. you know, did I, am I doing, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? What I'm supposed to be doing right now in this season is being a dad. Yeah. Like <clears throat> for most people, the greatest legacy that you're going to leave behind are the people that you raise. Yeah. It's not going to be that quarter that you made the most money for a gigantic corporation. That's a great thing. It pays the bills. Right. But that legacy is in those smiles and in those kindnesses and in, and in what you're teaching those kids to do. And so my calling right now is to be a dad to these two little girls and to honor my son's legacy in any way that I can. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's one of those things where you know, you you think you you need to do do all this chasing and running and you you chasing after the dollar, get that bag, you know, because then that allows you to have these things where you know, it's it's those moments that you have of laughing over something stupid with your kids. You know, someone, you know, one of them's talking to you and it farts just comes out <laughs> and that just, you, you both just die <laughs> laughing about that, uh-huh. you know, or, you know, it, you laugh so hard it causes you to fart. Now there's more <laughs> right. laughter. Yeah. It's like, it just, it's just those little moments, those precious things. Those are the things that they'll remember. Those are the mm-hmm. stories that they'll be like, I remember when I was a kid, and blah, 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 blah. Right. Not. I remember when dad was not at the house because he took on, you know, a third job so that right. we could do this other thing. Mm-hmm. It was the time that you were there. So being present, um, that's, that's one of those things that, you know, we we're only given this limited resource we call time. Right. There is, Mon- there's an unlimited amount of money. There is an unlimited amount of money, but how much of the limited resource of time do you want to trade for that? Exactly. And that's why 
I think when we talk about things like finding a second family in the theater or finding that faith community that you can really connect with, um, those are, those are valuable uses of time. Those are, you know, those enrich your life. They can enrich the lives of other people. Um, and of course, you know, the, these precious gifts that you're given to raise and send out in the world to do hopefully even better than you have done. Um, that that's really what it's all about. And it's so cliche and you hear it. Don't chase my, you know, Mm -hmm. I feel like you hear that ad nauseum. It's in all the movies and whatever, but it gets so real and let, you know, I can tell you from someone who wishes they would have worked a little less Mm -hmm. when they had their son here on earth. Yeah. Um, it, those Saturdays that I spent doing freelance gigs, you know, I, I sudden, I wished really quick that I had, that I'd spent a little more time watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse with Graham. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, and you can't live, you can't live in regret, No, but you have to have perspective. All right, Wes, this is the time of the show where we'd like to dive a little bit deeper. I know yeah. we kind of talk we about... Already, you want to go, go deeper than this, Rob? Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, we, <laughs> we, we, we touched the surface on some of this stuff. Because this now I want to talk about you mm-hmm. and concentrate on, on you. And the, you know, the sadness, everybody deals with sadness. Everybody, I think, deals with a certain amount of depression, anxiety, those type of things. And it's how we deal with that. Um, and when we realize that there are other people that go through the same thing as us, it helps us to make those bonds and those connections uh, as humans to be able to be, you know, more sympathetic and empathetic with each other. But um, for you and all that you've gone through, how do you stay positive and what do you do to keep the dark at bay? Yeah, there are days when it's tougher than others. And, um, I'm going to start by saying you, there are resources available that people need to take advantage of. Um, Going to see a professional counselor. That is something that I kind of pushed, you know, pushed away before all of this. No, it helped Mm -hmm. having somebody that you can talk to and say anything can be a godsend in some of these moments. Um, And, there are some times where you may need a medical solution to, to get you through some of those dark days. Um, I had a doctor shortly after Graham passed away. She did not give me an option. She said, I'm giving you this prescription and I need you to, I need you to take it for a couple months because it doesn't get, this is, this is the worst. Like right. you're going to, you know, you need something to make sure you stay even killed through this. And I am so thankful that that happened. Um, I also had my pastor who, who looked at in our eyes um, after the diagnosis and knowing what was coming and said, this is, this is as bad as it gets. Um, You're, you have survived the worst of what life is going to throw at you Mm -hmm. and you can, you can make it. Yeah. You have proved to yourself that you can make it. Mm-hmm. And so those words have come back to me a lot. I, I've, I've survived the, the worst at what life it can throw at me. And so bring it on, baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I've gotten through that and I'm, I'm standing and you know, I, I can take, I can take what's next. Um, it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt like hell. Yeah. Like, um, I mentioned Thanksgiving tables. There's always an, there's always someone missing at every family gathering at every birthday party. There's someone that's not there. Yeah. And we feel that. Um, and the years go on and other people have other lives. They remember, but it's something that you carry with you. Right. There was a quote that I found shortly after this. And it was, I can't remember exactly what it was, but the gist of it was, I have a great pain in my life, but I am a joyful person. Mm -hmm. Joy is a choice that you invest in and you're going to have bad days. We all have sucky days. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but joy and happiness are choices that you make. No, you don't just wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be happy today. It doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you have to make some kind of investment in that day to mm-hmm. say, it's going to get a little bit better. I'm yeah. going to work on something that's going to make it a little bit better. And this is from somebody who I apologize if this is too morbid. I've gone to the, to a cemetery where I now have a plot mm-hmm. and laid on the ground where I will be, where I will rest one day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and thought, I just want to be in this ground now. Yeah. You know, I want to be with my son again. I, I am over this. Yeah. But it's never been one of those situations for me where I wanted to, to make that day come today. Yeah. Maybe I wished I've wished many times it was me instead of Graham. Yeah. Um, I've wished so many times that I was with him again, Mm -hmm. but I have never wanted to take that action because that is not my place to do that. Yeah. And I'm telling you in 16 months, the joy that Graham brought into our life there, the rest of my life, if I live to 150 cannot spread that kind of joy to other people. And so for me to be able to give a little piece of it to any person, any day that is worth waking up that day and trying to do. And so we were at church one day and, um, I got to know this guy and, um, you know, I was, I'm at church. I'm I'm on stage at church a lot doing real, the most ridiculous things. I'll dress up in any costume. I'll (laughs) make any weird sound, do any weird voice just to try to get people to laugh. Like we said, tear down those walls. Mm -hmm. And, um, we had connected and I had told him the story about Graham and the story of um, our life. And then a few weeks later I was doing something. I was talking to people and just being generally my jovial self. Right. And he stopped me and he said, the joy that comes from you, I could never tell what has happened in your life because of that. And I stopped and I thought that I'm doing something right. Yeah. I could spend the rest of my life waking up crying every morning because I can beat you with yeah. sad stories. You yeah. know what I mean? Do yeah. you have a sad story? Guess what? Mine is sadder. I win. <laughs> um, but that's not what I'm called to do. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm called not to live out the sadness that we experienced. I'm called to live out the joy that our son brought to our life and continues right. to bring to our life. And that will be his legacy. The scripture that's on um, the headstone at the cemetery is that there is a greater joy ahead. And so that's, you know, that is talking about heaven and the joy that we're going to experience there. But there's no reason that we can't try to bring some of that joy right now. And the other scripture that brings us comfort, and that really, people have a lot of different ways to interact with their faith. And I know sometimes the church has done things that are wrong and the church can turn people off. But if you can get past some of those trappings or maybe some of those things you don't like, and you can invest in some of those scriptures, um, we've clung to Romans eight and 28 where it says God is working out all things together for the good of those that love him. And it's like, you say, well, my son passed away. What are you going to do with that God? Mm -hmm. And he shows me every day, you know, every day we get to say, that's what I've done. I've taken this terrible thing and I have done this with it. Mm -hmm. What are you, what are you going to do? It's, it's almost a challenge. Yeah. It's like, what are, what are you going to do with this now? And that's why, um, now that the girls are getting a little older, I'm thinking about auditioning for theater again, because mm-hmm. like I said, when you get up there in one of those character roles and you know that you're nailing it, mm-hmm. you're singing a song or something and you, you can look at somebody in the eyes and they are just cackling with laughter mm-hmm. or they're moved by something, some piece of the art that you brought out. Mm-hmm. There is nothing like that feeling of knowing that you're connecting with someone on a human level. Mm-hmm. And, um, and to be able to do that is just, it's just incredible. Did I answer the question? I don't, I don't know did, if I did, did or not. Did you? <laughs> so did what, you? what am I doing to keep the dark at bay? When it, when it got really dark, I, I was not afraid to take professional help or yeah. medical help when it was necessary. Yeah. And, we're Southern boys. There's a stigma to it. Mm-hmm. Get over it. Yeah. Get, I, someone needs to hear that. Get over it. You need to go talk to somebody. Yeah. You need 
to maybe ask the doctor if there's something that can, can help you through this time because there are ways you're not supposed to feel. And when you start feeling that way, you need, you need to talk to somebody about it. Yeah. And, but um, there's so many of your guests that say, you just got to get plugged in. You've got to have support. You've got to have family. And that's true. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not a weakness asking for help. No, I think that's part of that stigma that you're talking about is, is people think that it's, Oh, well, I'm going to be weak or I'm not a real man or, you know, whatever or you're crazy. And uh, it's, it's like, you got to put all those names aside. Right. You know, and it's okay to to seek help, whether it be medical, uh, professional, it, you know, even something like this. Right. You know, th- I've said it before. Therapy does not have to be a session where you're laying down on a couch. Right. <laughs> it's, it can be a conversation with a friend that you trust, mm-hmm. that you can be open with, that you can let those things that are inside out and sometimes just letting those things out help Mm -hmm. so much naming the thing takes the power away you know it it allows you to move through it to move on to to sometimes you have to walk with it right but it gives you that power um you know if if i were to say one of the things, and just from your story and just from what you've said here, one of the things I think that definitely helps you keep the dark at bay is that memory of Graham. Mm-hmm. He was 16 months of concentrated <laughs> concentrated sunlight uh-huh. and joy. Right. You know, so much packed into that 16 months that's going to carry you through a lifetime. Exactly. You know, and it's, and it's going to carry on beyond your lifetime. It's going to carry exactly. into your kid's lifetime mm-hmm. and the, and the other people that you touch, the other people that you come in contact with, because you can take that joy and you present it on stage in the characters you play in mm-hmm. the way that you bring about those type of things. That's just an observers. I love that. Uh, there, there are some days where I think the joy won't get me through these, this year three <laughs> of twin daughters, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but it, so far it has carried me. And so we'll see. Um, I, and now that, now that I'm actually in the threes, there were people that said, Oh, wait till you get to three. Now everybody's saying, wait till you get to teenagers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, I'm like, please don't rush it. I, I don't need, yeah. I, I don't need that yet. No, but no. Um, my wife painted a door pink in our house. This is way tangent. Mm-hmm. And it, to me, symbolized the official takeover of all females in my life. <laughs> like, okay, there's a pink door in our house. It, mm-hmm. It's it's just me and the girls now forever. <laughs> Here we are. I wouldn't have it any other way. All right, Wes. It's time for the Rob, third wait, segment. Wait, 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 wait. What is this? The Fast Five. This is. This is my dream. Can <laughs> I do the theme song? Do you want to do the theme song? Please, 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 please. Okay, please. all right, all right. Okay, go here ahead. We go. Fast Five. Fast Five. Fast Five. Fast Five. Fast Five. Fast five. <laughs> Oh, it's the best theme song. Like I, I've dreamed when you asked me to come on here, I was like, I, w- I want to do the theme song. So, <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on the theme song. I got to talk to my music guy, but you yeah, know, I just, just, it's in, in, in the in-between time. You know, I mean, so, if he needs me, I, I, I'll, you know, I'll, you get know. Here. I'll get his people to contact your people exactly. and we'll, you know, we'll get everything together. It is the fast five. So it's five quick fire questions. You just give me the answer off the top of your head. First thing you should come up with, uh, questions I get from the podcast. Dex app. It's an app created by my friend Travis Brown. Uh, if you ever have to do any uh, public speaking or anything like that, it's great conversation starters. I mean, it was built for podcasters, um, but you, anybody could just, you, you're talking to your Lions Club or something. You know, it's great. It's great conversation the starters. The Rotary. Exactly. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you go to chewingthefatbr.com slash poddex, uh, you can get your own poddex and use the promo code CHEW. You get 10% off. All right. Let's go into this for question number one. Ooh, fancy. If you could go back in time and give your parents advice before you were born, what advice would you give them? Um, 
This is kind of like one of those Marty McFly things. Yeah, but no, yeah. don't no. That's, you know, you know yeah, where he, well, no, where he's like, he's like, <laughs> you know, if you have a kid and he sets fire to the living room carpet, right. just be easy on just it. Just be easy. I would say you're doing fine. Give yourselves a break. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that that's probably too serious of an answer for the Fast Five, but no, no. I mean, it's it's whatever advice you would give your parents. <laughs> so my par- my parents were. Oh man, we're still best friends. I love them to death. And I know that, um, I know that when I left for college and stuff, they said, Oh, if we'd have done this different or we'd have done this different, you're, you're doing great. You, just, just go on your, go with your gut. You're, he, he's, he's going to, I'm going to turn out okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Your gut's good. Go with that. I like that. Yeah. All right. Question number two What's your favorite hobby? Oh, well, we've already talked about it. It's the theater, of course. The I mean, theater. The the theater. Th- right. I was telling somebody at work the other day, um, I'm, my the headquarters is up in New York, and I said, I just want to be up in New York to see shows. We love My wife and I love the theater. Th- that was so funny to them. I don't know why. Oh, that you that you wanted to see shows, or maybe that I said it that way. Oh, you oh you literally said it just. Oh like yeah, that. the uh, theater. Uh, oh, mm-hmm. I got you. I got you. <laughs> well, that's great. That's it's one of my favorite hobbies as well. I yeah, love, I love performing. That's that's one of the reasons why I love doing the podcast and stuff. I yeah. feel, I feel it's some sort of entertainment. Yeah, you know what I mean. I feel it's entertaining people. I hope oh, it's no, entertaining it people. I mean, entertains me. So. Know, well, they, well, that's all that matters. I just need that one. Just need that. Also, one. Um, shout out to um, Jonathan Cook's podcast, Gather by the Ghost Light. Oh yeah, you turned me on to that one, and that man. Speaking of entertainment, it is a good, it is a great. I feel podcast. like I have to have to give a shout out there too. Absolutely, it's a great podcast. You should just definitely check that out. Gather by the Ghost Light. All right, here we go. Number three. What food? Can you not find near you that you wish you could? So, like, I mean, you're from Arkansas. Yeah. Moved here. Is there anything from Arkansas that you can't find here that you wish you could? It doesn't have to be from Arkansas. Just, like, maybe you have a favorite food from some of your travels. That's hard. This is a hard question. Um, It's food. Right. Do you know what I don't feel like you can find enough of anymore is an all-you-can-eat buffet. Mm. Um, COVID. Well, right. But also, we had a Ryan's here in town. Man, mm-hmm. I could take out some Ryan's. Really? I remember it from growing up. That That's where, in Arkansas, Ryan's is fancy. Oh, okay. That's the fancy meal. That's like, the- when you're going out to eat, you're going to, like, the buffet and eat some of them rolls. Okay. Yeah. So, Ryan's had some and my wife has a my wife has an aversion to buffets, so, hmm. okay. yeah. So a, so a buffet, a, a Ryan style buffet. Get those. Yeah, uh, get the steaks. Get the sweet rolls. Yes. The, the yeast rolls and some that. banana pudding and mm. ice cream. You can have as many dessert. Maybe it's because you get as many desserts as you want. Because <laughs> they had a, a whole a whole channel for just right. desserts. So you can have a bowl with banana pudding, ice cream, and a cookie. Yeah, yeah all in one, and then uh, go back and get more. Exactly. And this is why I'm a character actor. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we are men of a certain shape. Yes. <laughs> hey, question number four. What do most people take for granted that you've vowed never to take for granted? I know. Yeah. That, that's, that's, We've, yeah, we can get pretty deep. I'm trying to think. Um, We'll go back here to um, fast food. Probably. Oh, I've wow. done some mission trips. And um, once you've eaten rice and beans for a whole week ah. and you get back to the United States, there's just nothing like a French fry from McDonald's. Mm, okay. So, and I know that's not healthy. I know I'm not supposed to eat that. Please don't write me letters, but yeah. don't take, don't take for granted the luxury of food <laughs> <laughs> and greasy food anywhere okay. you want it. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Here we go. Number five. Ooh, if someone made a movie about your life, who would play you? Oh, boy. Now, this can be a two-pronged answer if you want yeah. to. Who do you want to play you, and who actually probably would get the role? Uh, I'm thinking Danny DeVito is probably the person that would actually play me. <laughs> that would be awesome, though, too. Um, Who would I want to play me, though? Yeah. Oh, man. There's just a lot of... There's like a lot of just great people that could do it. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's probably like I really have 
a Will Ferrell vibe about me sometimes. Okay. So I feel like there's kind of kind of a connection there. Okay. You know, a Saturday Night Live type yeah. of yeah. somebody from that Character genre. Character actor. You exactly. Know, I got you. Okay. So, so, so yeah. you, Will Ferrell's on the list, but Danny DeVito's getting the role. Gotcha. <laughs> exactly. Awesome. <laughs> you also say in this, and I don't think you said it, so I'm calling you out. Here, that there's no wrong answers. There are no wrong answers. There clearly are. No. The very first episode, your trailer episode of this podcast, you said, does the toilet paper go over or under? Uh-huh. It always goes over. Okay. Are there people that don't put it over? Yes, there are. And that's and that's fine. That's, are they barbarians? I mean, I don't know. There, but see, there's there's and I will give this as a reason behind that I've read why people do okay. under. Is because they're scared that a spider will be hidden in the over. Because it's over the top. You don't see that there's something in there. You go to pull it, the spider falls out. Whereas if it's under. There can still be a spider up there. But you're going to see it. You're not going to fold it up into into your wiping materials. <laughs> no, I don't accept it. Okay. Well, you don't have to. Still no wrong answers. It's like, it's again, because I don't, I don't know if I believe you that there are no wrong answers. We're no, gonna, no we'll wrong we'll answers. continue this discussion. Okay. Off the well, air. I mean, I said over. So yeah, because I mean, you're a human being. Well, I mean, I'm just saying, and that's how you see it in the hotels. You can make that little triangle on the top yeah. you know, to, to know that someone's done something to the toilet paper. <laughs> right. Someone has touched this toilet paper before me. <laughs> that makes me so much more confident, especially in the age of COVID. Yes. That's it, Wes. Thank you so much. Man, That's I it. loved being here, Ron. That's the fast Thanks for five. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. I, uh, I, I love you. I, I appreciate your friendship. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll get a chance to share the stage again sometime soon. Yes. Um, if people want to keep up with you, how can they find you? Uh, basically on all the social media, Wes Hennings. Um, so that's that's the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram. Okay, I'm, I'm not very active on Twitter. Okay, um, I've started doing some reviews of Walmart pickups lately on my mm. Instagram. People seem to be enjoying that. Nice. I've gotten some good feedback. So okay, come and check out the Instagram and see what you can get because Walmart will give you some good substitutions in the pickup line. Okay, just another little life hack. You're you're oh, man, y'all you are getting so much it's tonight. Some value bombs I'm giving it all thing. away for free too. Yeah. So I'll put those links. In in the, in the show notes on here where you can look for Wes on uh, Instagram at Wes Hennings or as I like to say at Wee Shinnings yeah at Wee Shinnings at Wee Shinnings <laughs> and thanks again Rob for doing this What you, I, I really do love what you're doing here and trying to you know really just talk to people about real things and Absolutely. we have fun but there's also there's also a purpose behind it so thank, thank you, you for the joy that you're bringing well, to people's thank you. lives thank you Wes I appreciate yep. that buddy if you would like to support <laughs> this podcast you can buy me a coffee at chewing the at br.com thank you so much for tuning in i look forward to the next time when we can sit a spell and chew the fat <laughs> <laughs>